What's up, everybody? Paul from Hashtag Sports. So now that June 1st is upon us, you're going to hear lots of talk of players who are going to be cut, uh, players that uh, can now offer you a little more financial freedom. Uh, a real quick note on that. June 1st cuts, post-June 1st cuts, just mean that you take the dead money that a player would that you'd have to take for cutting a player and you can divide that into multiple years. Doesn't actually save you money overall. It just means you're taking the money and splitting it into two years. Uh, that's not critical for this episode. Uh, this episode's going to focus on how you get Josh Allen a new contract. And I drafted up a contract. I think it's something Buffalo can afford now that we know what 2022's salary cap ceiling will look like. We'll talk about that. So let's figure out how to get Josh Allen a new contract. All right, so for 2022, here's what happened. The uh, collective bargaining agreement in the NFL, well, through the collective bargaining agreement and with in conjunction with the NFL, they've announced a salary cap ceiling. And what that means is if revenue climbs to a certain level, the salary cap will be $208 million at its maximum. Now, normally they don't set ceilings for salary cap. Often it can climb as much as, as much as it possibly can. But the difference is that in order to make some of these benefits happen to play last year, um, and into this year, they had to make financial concessions. And what would happen is if the salary cap could go above $208 million, like if the calculation said, well, really, it could be $220 million. What they're going to do is they're going to take that money that's over the 208 and they're actually going to pay back benefits that they took away um, in order to make the last uh, season and into this season uh, even financially possible. The salary cap for uh, 2022 is going to be $208 million at its maximum. Now, could it fall below that? Yeah, it sure could. But they're they're estimating that given the revenue uh, that's coming in, given the fact that you're going to be able to have people back in the stands, um, you know, increased merchandise, the, the NFL really does expect revenue to, to skyrocket in 2021, uh, which impacts 2022 salary cap. So with all that being said, Let's talk about how you get Josh Allen a deal, what the deals on the market already look like, and uh, you know how you get Josh to pay him $40 million a year. It's actually not as crazy um, as it sounds once you get into the numbers, and we'll kind of look at other players' deals and, and just make sure that we're falling right in line. There's a theory behind it that not a lot of people really talk about. I'm going to let you in on that um, because – it's the baseline fabric of how these deals work now. Uh, so uh, let me get you into that, uh, and let's talk about how you get Josh Allen a new deal. So let's take a look at other players' contracts right now and look at some of the key factors of them. So we're going to look at three players, Patrick Mahomes, Dak Prescott, and Deshaun Watson. We're going to start with Dak Prescott. Each one of these deals is written very different, so we're going to simplify a bit. Uh, Dax deal offered a huge signing bonus, a $66 million signing bonus, which, uh, as you might know, means that when you get a signing bonus on a deal, you take that money and you can divide it evenly among the first five years of a contract. And you'll notice that that's what they've done here. They've taken $66 million, and that is divided evenly among five years of the deal. That saves you some salary cap space because you're giving up. You're giving Dak Prescott $66 million the day he signs his contract. And then a lot of times they'll take lower base salaries when they get a higher signing bonus. The one thing that's important to call out here is, one, you see his cap number, $22 million for 2021. Uh, I'm sure he didn't mind. He's making $75 million his first year uh, with his base salary and then that $66 million signing bonus. He's effectively got $75 million basically in the bank already. Um, but his cap number is $22 million. That's 10% of the salary cap for 2021. Very smart how they did that, right? Very smart deal. What about 2022? Well, his uh, base salary jumps to $20 million. Still the same $13 million signing bonus. He's eating up about 16% of the cap. The following year, $31 million. You see his base salary skyrocketing, right? Well, now Dak Prescott's almost 20% of the uh, salary cap that is in current state. This is actually a pretty decent deal. Getting Dak for you know $160 million on four years, that's probably right around franchise quarterback value. It's just done kind of in a funky way, right, where it's a real low base there, then it skyrockets up. All theory on how you sign contracts. I'm sure it was an easy deal to work out when you're saying, hey, Dak, how would you like to make $75 million today?
Let's move on to Deshaun Watson. Now, Deshaun Watson's deal, again, very different. A little bit of a middle-of-the-road signing bonus here. They gave him uh, $29 million. Again, you'll see that divided up among the first five years of the deal. You may say, Paul, well, what about this deal? Uh, 2020, don't look at 2020. Um, they'd rework some figures on that deal. So don't let. we're not going to focus on 2020. We're going to focus on 2021 and forward. Now, you'll notice Deshaun Watson's contract, again, super low base salary. But they gave him... $30 million, which I'm sure he was happy to say, okay, I'll make $40 million in 2021. That's fine. It's only 8% of the cap. He's carrying a 15, almost $16 million salary cap figure. Well, then in 2022, boom goes the dynamite. We're at $35 million. Passes it to the man, shoots it, and boom goes the dynamite. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for that look in the sports, Brian. Yeah. Uh, and a $40 million per year number. Again, 19% of the salary cap. Uh, the salary uh, number goes down. He's got a huge roster bonus, but again, $42 million, 18% of the salary cap. And then in 2024, that number lowers down a bit. There's no roster bonus, uh, only $14 million on the salary cap. Uh, these two years would likely uh, be reworked. Uh, if he were to get to year in 2023, these two years would likely be restructured or extended. Patrick Mahomes. This monster, we're just going to look at for Patrick Mahomes because the deal is so strangely structured, uh, so unique. I don't want to confuse everybody. We're just going to look at the cap number and the percentages, okay? A $7 million cap figure, but that's because you're kicking that can pretty aggressively down the road. You'll notice he's got a base salary here of $60 million later, um, but only 4% of his team's salary cap. Well, then it jumps up. Now he's making 35, 36 mil, 17% of the salary cap. 46, 47 mil, 20% of the salary cap. 44 mil, 17% of the salary cap. Okay, pump the brakes here. We're seeing a figure. Most of these quarterbacks, once they get past the years where they're being kind to their franchise uh, and making a lot of money in signing bonus and roster bonuses, uh, then they're jumping up between 18 to 19%. Really, 18% is probably the target zone. That's probably the honeypot zone, right? It's where you want to be. You want to pay your quarterback, believe it or not, a franchise level quarterback between 17 to 19 percent of your salary cap whatever that year is right crazy the percentages that go to a quarterback so we have to figure out a way to make that magic happen so let's take a look at josh allen's contract we're going to look at microsoft excel uh and we'll just uh see if we can make uh you know make this work so here's how this happens Right now, if we were to take a look at Josh Allen's deal, it is a one-year deal. This is his current contract. One year, $23 million in base salary. That's it. No more. It's all base salary. He's got to earn it per week. Here's the thing about guaranteed years like this one. The 2021 is, is fully guaranteed. Or 2022 is fully guaranteed. Here's why we talk about Josh Allen's contract and you don't want to sign it right now. He's already on the hook for such a small amount in 2021, you don't want to do anything that's going to compromise that because you don't really have the salary cap space to do so. So what you want to do is you want to come to Josh with this deal now, agree to it in principle, but you don't sign anything until you can give him money that's not going to impact your 2021 year. So let's talk about 2022's deal. Again, it's fully guaranteed. It's a $23 million salary, but he's got to earn that per week. Well, t the nice thing about that is it gives you a baseline for a signing bonus. You just have to replace that $23 million. Simple math. We're not going to cost Josh Allen money in 2023. We could absorb 2022. We could absorb that $23 million in salary cap space if the salary cap's going to go up to $208 million. That's fine. We could absorb that space. But we got to keep it pretty close to that probably, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to get Josh Allen a contract extension. And if we were to try and negotiate it in principle today, it is a seven-year, $290 million contract for about $41.5 million a year. Now, that does not mean you give Josh Allen $41.5 million a year. That means that's just the average. It's where you got to kind of end up. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about why. But a seven-year deal... $290 million is a crazy figure, but really not outside of the realm of franchise quarterback. So how do we get Josh that money, right? First off, what we're going to do is we're going to take this $23 million and we're just going to give it to him in a signing bonus. We're going to give him a $22 million signing bonus. 
Now, $22 million divided up among five years means that's what? $4.4 million, if Matt's correct? We should check that. 22 divided by 5, $4.4 million. Look at me, the math guy. All right. All right, $4.4 million. That means Josh is going to have $4.4 million in signing bonus money the first five years of his deal. Again, we're going to take that $22 million signing bonus. We're going to put it across the first five years. Now, what we could do is if we give Josh $1 million as a base salary for 2022, he's still getting the $23 million. He got $22 million in signing bonus, a $1 million salary. He's getting his $23 million, but his salary cap number is only $5.4 million. Well, that, that sounds pretty low. If we're going to get Josh to average $41 million a year, having him at $5.4 million cap figure for 2022 doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't actually reward him for anything, right? It just replaces the exact dollar that he was making all right, so let's give Josh a little more money. Let's increase this to $18 million. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're giving Josh Allen $40 million his first year. Okay, now we're on track, right? His salary cap number is only $22.4 million, but in cash, he's going to make $40 million his first season. Okay, it's pretty close to the average that we want to hit. We're probably on the right track. Seven hours later. We've hit our deals. Here's what we're looking at. First off, we've got Josh Allen signed. His cap number could increase $6 million, but you're getting salary cap space. Again, this is just being kind of quick on figuring out a signing or figuring out a contract. So his, his first year contract could increase in salary cap, but he's making a ton of money. Remember, he's getting a signing bonus and he's getting base salary. But if you look at this, you're paying 29 mil, 37 mil, 40 mil, 41, 43, 47, 49. And mind you, there's a marginal increase in the salary cap every year. This is not unrealistic for a seven-year, $290 million deal. And it's one you could physically sign him to. You have to wait until you are good to give him a signing bonus, but you could get him on this deal. Now, here's why this is important. And we didn't talk about this yet. So let's take a look at how much percentage of the salary cap Josh would take up. Okay. Well, if we take a look at it, and what I did was I projected out what the salary cap could be. So what what I did was I took that $208 million ceiling that they gave us, right? So here's your $208 million, and I put a 6% increase on it per year, which is very conservative. Salary cap's gone up 10% uh, often. So what I did was I, I put in a 6% salary cap increase. So I've estimated what the salary cap is going to be. $208 million, $220 million, $233 million, $247 million, $262. Now, mind you, we could get to these figures faster. I was just trying to be conservative. So in our deal, what does our deal look like? Well, our deal gets us to about 16% of the estimated salary cap. That's perfect. That's exactly where you want it. If you're paying 19% of a salary cap, that's no good. When you look at the numbers, you're like, oh my God, paying Josh $41 million, that's so much money. Yeah, it is. It's a ton of money. But if you look at a 6% salary cap increase every year, it's very digestible. Very digestible. Seven years, $290 million is very doable. I did it sitting in my, sitting in my, you know, in my, in my office in Lockport, New York, I got Josh seven years, $290 million. And it's a real figure. It could really happen. You can't have him signed to an extension right now, though. And I think that's the message that I need to drive home here. This contract is very doable, but you can't sign him to a deal right now because you're going to have to give him signing bonus money. You give him money to sign a deal that impacts this year. You don't have the money to do any of that. Now, everybody's going to be talking about post-June 1st cuts. That's fine and dandy, but don't forget, those post-June 1st cuts are going to put money onto next year's salary cap, which would impact somebody like Josh Allen and Tremaine Edmonds. You don't want to do that unless you really need the space today. You're, you're being wimpy. 
Yeah, I'll gladly pay you tomorrow for a hamburger today. I'd gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. That is precisely what you're doing if that is the realm that you want to go down. If that's the road you want to go down, I don't recommend it. Now, is this deal doable? Yes. Can Buffalo sign, it, sign Josh Allen to it right now? Nope. Can they agree in principle to this deal and have it have a date that the contract will be signed? Yes. Yes, they can. They can agree to principle. They do not have to file paperwork with the NFL. They do not have to file paperwork with the Players Association. They agree to a principle. In They can agree to a deal in principle and not report it to those agencies until the deal is about to be signed. Totally, totally fine. That's what I would expect Buffalo to do. You want to get Josh Allen comfortable now, but you can't get him money now. The best way to do that, you offer him seven years, $290 million. You're pretty comparable to where everybody is, and you give yourself enough room to renegotiate this deal. You give yourself enough room to keep. Uh, I'm sure Josh will feel comfortable in this deal. He's going to make a lot of money the first day that it's signed. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done in principle, but you can't let anybody... You can't release the physical details of pen to paper until later in the year. All of you that want Josh Allen signed, I do too. But you have to wait. Paul from Hashtag. Have a good one, everybody.